dear students today we will see what is pulse code modulation and demodulation that is pcm modulation and demodulation now with this topic we are entering into a concept where we are going to use digital coding of analog signal digital coding of analog signal now here let's start with the topic pulse code modulation pcm and its demodulation now before going to the a concept of pcm modulation and demodulation we should keep in mind that in this concept we are doing digital coding of analog signals that means a method where a analog signal will be converted into a digital code word or a digital data okay like for example if you see here if you are having a analog signal this analog signal will be converted into samples okay it will be converted into samples and then these samples will be quantized quantization is a process where you superimpose the samples on standard labels and you take the center value and see that the values say for example this first sample is of 2 volt if second sample is of 4 volt okay then it will be coded as 00100100 like this and this binary numbers will be sent through transmitter to your receiver now here we'll see what is pulse code modulation and demodulation in short pulse code modulation is a method that is used to convert an analog signal into a digital signal so that a modified analog signal can be transmitted through the digital communication network pulse code modulation is in binary form that is zeros and ones so there will be only two possible states high and low zero and one we can also get back our analog signal by demodulation at the receiving stage the pulse code modulation process is done in three steps now these three steps are important in pulse code modulation where you are converting analog signal to digital that is sampling quantization and coding okay so these three steps are important now what is sampling what is quantization and how do we code after that so if you see sampling sampling is a process of measuring the amplitude of a continuous signal at discrete instants converts the continuous signal into a discrete signal now say for example if you are having a analog signal like this continuous signal like this now this signal can be converted can be converted into samples this will be the samples of the continuous signal okay now this is how your samples will look like and here you are going to follow the sampling theorem where the sampling rate fs will be greater than or equal to 2fm this you are going to follow and you are going to bring out the samples of the continuous wave that is at discrete in instance you are going to get time okay at a discrete instance you are going to have this samples then we will go to see what is quantization in a quantization an analog signal an analog sample with an amplitude that are converted into a digital sample with an amplitude that takes one of a specifically defined set of quantization values this is very important quantization is done by dividing the range of possible values of the analog samples into some different levels and assigning the center value of each level to any sample in the quantization interval quantization approximates the analog sample value with the nearest quantization values this means that the analog signal is first sampled by the sampler you are going to take the samples 
the sampled analog pulse can take any amplitude. This analog pulse amplitude is assigned nearest digital amplitude level out of fixed number of levels. You are going to have fixed number of levels which are going to be superimposed on those uh, samples and then wherever the am amplitude of that particular sample will be, there the center place uh, will be approximated and taken. The center value will be taken. This process is called quantization. That means uh, what is happening here is, say for example, you have an analog signal like this. This is your analog signal. And you are going to make samples of this analog signal. So this is the first sample, second sample, third sample, fourth sample, and fifth sample. Okay. Now say if you are having a system where you are going to code it for 3 bit, then 2 raised to 3 will be 8. Okay. So if you want to code it for 3 bit, 2 raised to 3 will be 8. So these samples will be superimposed by eight levels means this will be level zero this will be your one this will be your two this will be your three this will be your four okay at a regular timing interval okay so at regular timing interval you can have this levels okay now say this is zero this is uh, one two three four five, six, seven, you will have eight. Now say particular this, this amplitude has come to value two. It, you can round off that two as two volt and that can be given in binary as zero, one, zero. Now if you take this sample level, okay, now it has reached four, that can be taken as four volt and this can be given as one, zero, zero. In this way, every sample you can round off to the level's center value, the fixed specific level center value. And that value can be converted into binary numbers. And that is how we do the coding of the samples. Then we'll go to see what is pulse code modulation system because now we know how do we convert an analog signal into a digital coding, okay? Now the first section the first blocks were what you see, that is, first five blocks is the transmitter section. And then in center, you see the channel and then receiver section. So this is the transmitter section. So here you see a transmitter section. Here you see the channel. So this channel is making the data to move like this. And this is your receiving section. Okay. Now starting with the block diagram, first one you have a analog message signal. So here you are going to have an analog message signal. So this can look like this depending upon your message. Your any message sound or anything will be converted to electrical signal and then it will be converted as an analog message signal and then you will get that analog signal over there. Okay. Then you have a low pass filter. here. This low pass filter will eliminate the high frequency components present in the input analog message signal which are greater than the highest frequency of the message signal to avoid aliasing of the message signal okay so here this is going to eliminate your high frequency components and it is going to pass only the low frequency okay it will going to pass only the low frequency then you have sampler now this sampler will see that that particular analog message signal is converted into samples, is converted into samples where it will follow the sampling theorem, the Nyquist condition, and it will maintain the sampling frequency f is greater than or equal to 2 fm. Okay, so that we can reconstruct the signal back from the samples. Then we have quantization, a quantizer is there. The input to the quantizer is analog samples and those samples will be converted into fixed value. Then superimposing of those samples will be done over fixed levels and then a particular sample's amplitude will be converted as one of the 
finite number of levels and then a rounded off value is given by the quantizer. Say for example, the first sample can have two volt as a value. The second sample can have four volt as a value. The third can have uh, five volt as a value. Fourth can have again four volt and fifth can have two volt. So this one, two, three, four, five, when they are superimposed on number of levels like this, okay, and then particular level, wherever the amplitude is going to reach, those levels we are going to convert into a rounded level. And then after that, this two volt will be converted as 0, 1, 0. This four volt will be converted as 1, 0, 0. This five volt will be converted as 1, 0, 1. Like that you do in the encoder system. Okay. Now these bits will be forming your line formats. If it is say 0, 1, 0, then you have 0, 1, 0. So in this way, you can have waveforms. If it is 1, 0, 0, you will be having 1, 0, 0. In this way, you can have your waveforms, which will be transmitted from the transmitter and it will go along the channel. Okay, so this is your PCM output. So PCM output, we have converted analog signal into a coded signal, into a coded digital signal. Okay, Now that will go and when the a channel is a long way then you can use regenerative repeaters in between now this regenerative repeaters are going to act as your amplifiers in analog signals so these are the units where any input which has come say if the input was 101 and the input was something like this 101 where the amplitudes or the voltage levels were little distorted so regenerative repeater will generate a new wave so the, it will compare that with some threshold voltage and it will generate new way new waveform and that will look like like one zero and one a perfect new waveform will be generated so that all that distortion or whatever it has come across noise or anything that will be eliminated and a new waveform will be generated of the same code or the same data. This regenerative repeaters will be installed at various regular intervals in the channel and after you reach the receiver, the first output, the first unit here will be your regeneration circuit. So regeneration circuit will again regenerate the particular waveform what was outputted by the encoder and that will be given to the regeneration circuit here. So here you have regeneration circuit. It will going to generate the correct output what the encoder had produced. Now those outputs will be given to decoder here. Now decoder is going to do something like demodulation. It decodes the pulse coded waveform to reproduce the original signal. This circuit acts as a demodulator. So it is going to produce the original signal. So all your pulses will be recovered back. So say for example, this where your pulses, so all these pulses will be decoded back. Okay. Then those will go through a reconstruction filter, which will be nothing but a low pass filter. And that will produce a original analog signal, what was there at the starting and that will be given to the destination. So this is how your pulse code modulation system, a block diagram will work, okay? And now in this, on each block, you should be able to write a few points. And then you should see that the transmitter section, the channel and the receiver section is explained properly. So we'll see the small notes on that. So the first point, the first unit was low pass filter. This filter eliminates the high frequency components present in the input analog signal, which is greater than the highest frequency of the message signal to avoid aliasing of the message signal. So it is going to stop or it is going to block a high frequency and it is going to pass low frequency, the desired analog signal. Then you will be having sampler, which will do the samples of the analog signal. So this is the technique which helps to collect the sample data at instantaneous values of message signal 
so as to reconstruct the audio signal. The sampling rate must be greater than twice the highest frequency component, okay, omega of the message signal in accordance with the sampling theorem. So you have to follow sampling theorem. You have to see that your sampling frequency fs fs is greater than or equal to twice fm, and based on that, samples should be made of your analog signal. So analog signal will be converted into samples like this. Okay. Then we'll go to see what is quantizer. Quantizing is a process of reducing the excessive bits and confining the data. The sampled output when given to quantizer reduces the redundant bit and compresses the value. Say for example, you are having some samples after the sampler and those samples you are going to quantize okay so here you can see this was your first analog signal then analog signal was converted into samples this were samples okay these were samples and these samples were then superimposed with standard levels say if you're having eight levels then you can generate a three bit code word okay and then you check where the amplitude of the sample is going to lie and say if it is lying here if this is zero this is one if it is lying here then you can take it as one volt then if it is lying here you can take it as this is two volt this is three volt this is four volt you can go as five volt six volt seven volt okay so you can take this this as five volt okay this will be five volt six volt seven volt okay so in this way you can superimpose with the levels so all these levels will come like this horizontal levels will be there of uh, fixed levels okay and those levels will decide at at uh, which uh, value your sample amplitude is say for example if the sample has come to the fifth level if it is so much then that 5 volt will be decoded as your 101 so this will be your binary number and that will be formatted electrically as 101. Okay, that will be the coding. This is what encoding will do. But this rounded off value will be given by the quantizer. Okay, so quantizer will give the rounded off value as per the specific level, whichever the amplitude of that pulse attains. Then you have encoder. The digitization of analog signal is done by the encoder. It designates each quantized level by a binary code. The sampling done here is the sample and hold process. The three sections, low pass filter, sampler, and quantizer, will act as an analog to digital converter. Encoding minimizes the bandwidth used. Okay, so encoding is going to give you the binary coded word for every every fixed value which the code. Quantizer will give as the output. Then we will be having regenerative repeater in the channel side. So this section increases the signal strength. The output of the channel uh, also has one regenerative repeater circuit to compensate the signal loss and reconstruct the signal and also to increase the strength. A new R waveform will be generated after the regenerative repeater. Then in the receiving section, you will be having decoder. The decoder circuit decodes the pulse coded waveform to reproduce the original signal. This circuit acts as a demodulator. Then you have reconstruction filter. Now this filter is nothing but it is going to do digital to analog conversion. It is a low pass filter which is reconstruction filter to get back the original signal. So after the digital to analog conversion is done by the regenerative circuit and the decoder, a low pass filter is employed called as the reconstruction filter to get back the original signal. Then a conclusion of the full process, if you see, then the pulse code modulator circuit digitizes the given analog signal, samples it, codes it, and then transmit it in an analog form. This whole process is repeated in a reverse pattern in your receiving section to obtain the original signal. Now, uh, practically, if you go to speak only about PCM modulator, then in PCM modulator, you have three sections. One is the PAM sampler, which is going to produce the samples. The first one here, PAM sampler, which will produce samples from your analog signal. This is the analog signal. 
then the analog signal will produce samples okay samples then you have quantizer quantizer will produce a fixed value for this sample say for example the first sample is having a value of 2 volt second sample is having a value of 4 volt and the third sample is having a value of 2 volt and then encoder will give a binary bit to that the 2 volt will be taken as 0 1 0 4 volt will be taken as 1 0 0 again 2 volt will be taken as 0 1 0 and then it will be given a electrical line format 0 1 0 1 0 0 0 1 0 in this way okay then in more detail if you see the pcm modulator so here you can see the analog signal is one which is given to the sampler so here in the first section in the first part you can see the analog signal so here you have your analog signal this is your analog signal now this will be given to the sampler here then sampler will produce the sampling so this will be the samples which are produced according to the sampling theorem then you are having quantization happening quantization will see that these samples are superimposed with those standard levels here levels which will be having rounded off values and those rounded off values will be converted into binary bits by the encoder here similarly when you go to see pcm demodulator the input here will be your pcm wave including with noise so here the input will be pcm wave with noise which will be given to a comparator now this a comparator is having the clock signal and the input signal both uh, output will be generated here okay so serial output so whether it is a uh, one or zero or one or zero all will be generated say one zero one zero in this format or in any format whatever the data is will be generated in serial format now that serial format will be converted to parallel format by this serial to parallel converter and then that parallel code word will be decoded and given to a sample and whole circuit so that it can produce an analog signal and that analog signal is passed through a low pass filter so that any high frequency is eliminated and output will be the original analog signal whatever was your message signal that output you will get so this is your pcm demodulator then what are the advantages of pcm analog signals can be transmitted over high speed digital communication system the probability of occurring error will reduce by the use of appropriate coding methods a pcm is used in a telecom system a digital audio recording digitized video special effects digital video voice mail a PCM is also used in radio control units as transmitters and also a receiver for remote controlled cars, boats, planes. The PCM signal is more resistant to interference than normal signals. Okay, So these are some important advantages. If you want to put these advantages in an easy method, then you can also tell that the PCM pulse code modulation is a convenient for long distance communication. Second, it has a higher transmitter efficiency. And third, it has a higher noise immunity. These also you can give as advantages. Then we'll see our disadvantages of PCM. The PCM requires large bandwidth as compared to analog system. Encoding, decoding, and quantizing circuit of PCM is very complex. It is not simple. So these will be the disadvantages of PCM. Then if you see applications of PCM, the PCM is used in the satellite transmission system. It is used in space or communication. It is used in telephony. It is used in CD, that is compact disc, is the recent application of PCM. Then again, in the end, if you just look over the waveforms, so the waveforms here shown, you can see these waveforms. Okay, waveforms. The first waveforms is, is your analog signal. This is your input analog signal, input analog signal. Then the second waveform will be your samples, samples you have made. Okay, then the third will be you are giving values like 4 volt, 2 volt, 1 volt, okay, 2 volt, 4 volt for the samples which were there. The samples here, these were your samples. Okay, so these were your samples. So whatever the sample amplitude was, that 
you are going to round off to a particular fixed value by the quantizer by superimposing them on the number of fixed levels okay and then those you are going to convert into binary bits say 4 will be converted as 0 1 0 0 2 will be converted as 0 0 1 0 1 will be converted as 0 0 0 1 again 2 will be converted as 0 0 1 0 and 4 will be converted as 0 1 0 0 this will be your encoding this will be converted here in electrical format say 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 1 0 0 like this you will be having here your format for the representation of the binary bits okay now those code words will reach to your uh, receiver these are the code words which which will reach this way the code words will reach to the uh, receiver now those will be passed through low pass filter that means first the samples will be made of that and those will be passed to a sample and hold circuit and then they will pass through a low pass filter so here you can see that it is going to pass through the low pass filter this is passing through the low pass filter so from this code words you are making samples and then from samples you are going to make the uh, this thing you are going to pass it through a low pass filter and you are going to get back your original signal here whatever your analog signal was okay so this is how the process of the pulse code modulation and demodulation will look in terms of waveforms okay thank you students